glaube, ich bin schon mal sagen. Nein, man darf, man darf nicht. Ja, das war auch meine Absicht. Selbstverständlich, aber ihr seid jetzt. Ich habe nur gesagt, dass wir jetzt gleich anfangen. Ich glaube, Sie werden nicht folgen. Wir machen es über Englisch. Wir fragen die Leute, wenn es jemanden gibt, der Englisch lieber hat, dann machen wir es auf Englisch. Wenn alle für solche, dann machen wir es auf Englisch. Ja, das ist perfekt. Mhm. Hello everyone, uh, question as always. Uh, is there any other person who would request uh, to have English as the language of the talk uh, today? I think yes. So I yeah. run a cup. That's great, so let's have it in English. And uh, today, uh, well, actually, I invited uh, today's speaker because they are going to tell about something which I personally think is like a miracle. It's uh, like there are lots of people who have programmed uh, lots of years in a company that has almost uh, exists uh, since, yeah, almost forever. And then there are people who come there and who really can change the company without leaving it. So usually, <laughs> You change your company or change your company, uh, whereas it's not a real choice, you know, but there is uh, some exception. And therefore, I'm really happy to invite uh, these uh, people to deliver us a talk about how they did what they did and what they have got there. So, welcome and have your talk. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Ah, yeah. Uh, we ordered the pizza, I'm going to say hi to you all. Thanks. <laughs> 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 uh, thanks for coming here, everybody. Uh, personally, I hope that brains doesn't change too much. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> I've been in companies where I hope that there was more chance for change. So maybe you can show us how to do it. Uh, and once you have learned all that, we uh, have like two licenses of IntelliJ or whatever of our products for you to ruffle. To well, two lucky people will get a license. <laughs> so <laughs> now, please. So um, thank you very much for the invitation. Um, the talk is. Um, so we are very happy to do it in English because we came to all this like practice for a long time. <laughs> I think we couldn't do it in German now. So um, um, we call this talk "Every Change Needs Maniacs." And so um, just beware, I'm one of the maniacs. I'm the central maniac of this thing we would like to talk about, and would like to talk a story about um, founding an in-house community. And um, as Dimitri uh, said, it's, it's like a miracle, I think. So I'll see if it's like that. <laughs> so first of all, um, we like to have this thing working. So first of all, we like to uh, tell you who is who, who's talking to you. And there are three faces you can see, but only two people. So that is mm, the first mistake of the talk, is just because we have made this, this miracle together with Martin Heider, maybe some of you just knowing him, he's uh, like, uh, like me, working around Nuremberg as a first executive, an HR coach, an HR coach in our company, and he calls himself a community gardener of the HR community in Nuremberg. And um, my name is Andy, I call myself software craftsman at Startif, and um, I'm working there for now uh, 29 years. In this company, never worked in a different company, just in this one. I wasn't born in there, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> it was close. No, no, no. Close, close, close. Yes, yes. Um, yes, and uh, I brought someone with me. I'm the maniac, and he was the first follower. One of the first ones. Yeah. Um, my name is Daniel Bright. Um, I'm also called myself software craftsman. <coughs> now I started for ten years, and to be honest, there were times when I thought about. Like in the, um, almost the same story like in the 
beginning, but uh, I think something changed. But it's still changing. So everybody knows the company, the artist? Of course. <laughs> you all pay taxes, and, so, and you all have tax consultants, and so you may know that. Of course. Um, so, so we can start. Um, just, just a few um, numbers you may not know from that. We have about 7,500 employees in the company, and uh, around about 1,800 working in the development department where we make the software. And we are 50 years old. I didn't thought that you were fifty years But right from the beginning, we have um, just a few questions to you. So um, we would like everybody to please stand up. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Get some oxygen. Um, first question is: um, Who is running? Coding dojos in his company. Now, who's running is still standing, and who's not running, he can sit down. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Oh, that <laughs> seems to be a quick story. <laughs> um, the next question is And who of you who are still standing is running Kojo Creeks within his company? <laughs> ah. Who has still um, some kind of community in his company? Some kind of fishing community. <laughs> <laughs> I just wanted to have a chance for somebody standing. <laughs> okay, um, so the last question. Who of you has had <laughs> already 80% of your developers in your company? Did I already have them in my community? Yes, in this community. In the company, eighty percent of all the developers we have. New company, yeah. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> I missed that. Ah. <laughs> we thought we we find somebody. Yeah, we haven't even so much. Find some guys. That is the measurement. We have. We still not have eighty percent of our developers in our community, but uh, we're but working on it. We're doing So um, we told you that we will tell a story and it's um, it is a miracle and a miracle starts with a maniac who sets forth. Um, it is the history of uh, software constitute community that started. Um, you will find us under that Twitter name if you want to follow us. Um, and the history in, uh, in IT is starting in 2012. It's, it's a kind of history. Five years is a long time. Um, and we would like to stay, tell you what, what we have done and what went well and what didn't went well. So this, we, we try to be honest as far as we are allowed to know. We are honest. Um, <laughs> and it starts um, with one thing. Um, I told you I'm working in this company for 29 years. I'm a software developer. I started with um, C and I did this very, very bad thing, Visual Basic for <laughs> 12 years. <laughs> I'm still living. Um, <laughs> I did C sharp and everything else. And still, in starting with Visual Basic, I was, uh, was um, a fan of writing clean code. And I was, I was talking with my colleagues. I had many, many discussions. And at that time, the people say that I'm a kind of a clean code maniac. Most of my colleagues say, come on, don't talk about that. And then um, the management decided to make me a kind of clean code officer. It was kind of, you are now responsible for clean code in the whole company. Okay. <laughs> I think it was, it was that long. Yeah. And I was standing there and said, okay, thank you. Thank you. And what should I do with that? <laughs> um, I was very happy to get this job and get the, the chance to make people familiar with that clean code things. But to be honest, I didn't know what to do. And the first thing that's a kind of, of habit in our company is when there's something new, we just we just buy a training. So I thought ah, it would be a good idea to get a training for that, to get a clean code training in our company. And uh, we have a, of course, we have a clean code, uh, we have a, a training department. Some people who 
organize all these trainings and do the other thing around that. And I went to them and said, hey, Jess, I want to have a clean code training. They said, okay, we, we do something. And they, they hired a trainer and we made the first training and it went like that. Surprise, surprise, surprise. <laughs> The first clean code training crashed. That was kind of such a training. If you talk to people which is not now people about that training, they just say, don't get me started. So <laughs> it really was, I wasn't there, but I it was, it it was really like that. <laughs> the reason for that crash, maybe we didn't um, tell exactly what we wanted to have because we didn't do it at that time. And the trainer maybe put too much on us, sorry, and um, it went like that. And that's where we have this great occasion. We have to thank Martin, who isn't here, uh, here at the moment, because at that time he was at around our company and he got to know about this crash. And he said, Okay, mm, maybe let's talk to Andy, let's talk to the trainer, he didn't know the trainer, and let's find out what went wrong. That's the retrospective, because if you stop now, you will learn this topic for the next 10, 20 years. And so, Andy? Yes, I have to. A retrospective with, with Martin, um, and besides that, he had a, respective, a retrospective with the trainer of that crash course the training. And um, he was asking what, what went wrong and what was the problem. And, and we sat down and we made um, a mind map. <laughs> so I, I, you, you, you do not need to read everything on it. It was a long mind map with, with many, many ideas on it. and. And he would, and this was the first time, time I got in touch with the software craftsmanship idea. Just, he, to make, yeah, yeah. So just to make it clear, that this is only problems that are right here, how you can transfer clean code into the company. So it's starting to get the topic, yeah, to introduce the idea of software craftsmanship at that time. And it was more than just clean code, it was all the ideas around it. And Martin was just, uh, had an idea of software craftsmanship. I, I did got this idea at that point. I haven't heard about it before. Um, it sounded cool. So, okay. And um, that is the green part is the, the, the ideas we have just already have made in this the meantime, since 2012 to now. And um, yes, and one of the results of this brainstorming was we have to make a new training. And the training, Concerning all these ideas we have founded in this mind map and um, being more than just clean code and fitting to our company and fitting to the people who will come to this training. Because um, you, you have to make trainings which fit to the people and not fit the people to the training. <laughs> and so he, he went off and he was looking for a new trainer. Maybe some of you know him, Johan Klee. And, um, but he was a kind of trainer who said, I don't have just a new training concept out of the pocket. I would like to know what my customers want to have. And one of these brainstorm ideas we, we mentioned before was to found a community. That was very interesting for me to found a community within my company. And I'm just a maniac enough to say, okay, well, I will try it. First meetings were. Uh, and this uh, also was hard. Really fit together. It was one thing was okay. This is now kind of a start of the community. And he wants to put, and it's also you have the people you want to ask. What do you want to learn? And that's what happened then. In the first meeting of our um, community, um, um, Johannes was coming and he was asking, "What do you want to know?" And because I invited. Um, already colleagues are already um, concerning those those clean code things. There were some of maybe you mentioned with Jagni and Dry and Kiss and all those those clean code patterns. Still clean clean code was interesting for us. And continuous integration, <coughs> version control, naming and everything else. And we made a dot voting and out of this this um, result of this dot voting he um uh, Johannes Lee made this training. And besides that, um, Martin was asking some very funny things for us. And first of all, he asked who wants to have a community and who wants to 
to meet regularly on a monthly basis or on a two week basis and he asked how often do you want to meet and do you want to meet funny uh, most of the people wanted to meet in the six weeks period but if you ever organize some kind of events the six weeks period is quite <laughs> difficult <I'm not> sure. <laughs> Okay, um, and then he asks, who of you uh, has ever heard from Colin Cutler? And so you have here four columns, <coughs> five columns. And the first uh, column was, it said, what is this? The second one, I heard of it. The third one, I, would, I wanted to attend one. And, and there's many the others because nobody selected. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it was funny because there was one time attending and I, I, I do meetings regularly. Um, the first coding cutters, <coughs> some say, what is it? Some, mostly had heard of it. None of them had ever attended. Then he asked, coding dojos. Um, <coughs> some had heard it. And one wanted to go. I, I wanted, but then <laughs> um, and then you ask, uh, have you heard some of code retreats? Most of uh, the attendees said, what is it? And three have heard of it. So that was the, yeah, the knowledge of the people at that time of all these things. And um, our trainer made a new concept and we um, have a new training and to get the people, unfortunately it's very low here, <laughs> to get the people interested in this training we call it the responsible software development. So many people say why should I go to the I am responsible? Well, I said come, listen and change your opinion. This is very important about the story but also about sharing about how to work together, about yeah, maybe the principles about what <coughs> craftsmanship even if it didn't call it. Mm -hmm. so, so it was sharing <coughs> information and everything. It was a three days training and it's uh, the first success story we had because uh, until now around about 450 developers of our company has made this training. They have made, they run through it and so it's quite successful. And um, yes, one of the problems um, he found out when he was talking with the trainer of the crash course was the design of our training room. Because um, they're looking like in these, these uh, Western films, like the Dragon Ball stuff. The, the Indians coming and throwing arrows. The, the trainer standing in front of it. It's not a good atmosphere for training. And um, then he asked our training department, don't you have any different rooms? They, then they said, oh, well, these are the rooms for the internal training, and these are the rooms for external training. <laughs> <laughs> these are the rooms that we have for training our tax consultants. And um, so it's funny, internal, external. Well, so kindly ask if you can get rooms <laughs> And so we asked them to, just to change one of those regularly rooms for internal training, and they did it. And um, so we had the first training, <coughs> pilot training, first training of this course, <coughs> of this track. And um, no, and, and here was the, at that time it was a time when I really tried to communicate the performance, I was just heard from Andy from it. And I got to do this training and it was really like, okay, I want to be part of this community and I spoke to Andy if I can help in organizing, um, doing events. And one of the first things we tried out was doing coding dojos. Yeah, but we have one learning of this. Is oh, this okay, uh, sorry. <laughs> um, don't underestimate the influence of your training room, of your room design. When you do trainings, you have to, you have a room. To have a supporting room designer. If you want to have new ideas, or if you want to have the people getting um, a different uh, mindset for their job, you can't train them in the rooms where you train the wrong mindset. It, it won't work. So. <coughs> so sorry, and, uh, what was exactly the problem? 
regarding the room in the other layout. <coughs> when when you when you look at this layout, this it is always like in school teaching, mm -hmm. and this it just, it just the train is, is sitting or standing in front or talking all the time, and it's not collaborative. You're not working together. You're just sitting around, and you maybe you just uh, after dinner you go sleep, or you're looking for your emails or something like that. It's always the same in these trains. And this kind uh, gives you the chance um, to work in groups, to work together, to get. Like in this training, he was training hair programming, coding tutorial, all those things, and this would that would not work in, in, a, in a room like that. Hair programming. So it, it will work, work when the people know how to hair program, but if they don't know what it is, it's better to get a room that supports it. I think. <coughs> Um, and we have the second learning, <coughs> but that's kind of uh, evergreen. Every crash is a new chance, and it was a new chance for us. And as you told, we started doing okay. now coding dojo. That's the right time to join in. <laughs> yeah, we start doing coding dojo. Um, we did a first coding dojo which was kind of a success. Um, a lot of people come. And I should say coding dojo even without. And you did one before, so just two doing it, it was a success. And then we thought, okay, let's do it in on a regular day. Every two weeks, you can come to us and we are doing coding dojo. Um, and most of the part <coughs> it was Andy and me, and maybe another one, because we were in another building and people hadn't the chance to come to our rooms. So we said, okay, that wasn't the right thing, but we, we started in team. Um, um, even going to the teams where I say, hey, if you want to start coding dojo, it's cool, we can help you. And a lot of people at that time really come to us to do the course as a way, not as a responsible developer course, and say, okay, you want to do that in our team, can you help us? And we say, of course, we have experience. We didn't have, but we tried it, it was okay. <laughs> so that's the we reason why you need maniacs in the first to change it, because we didn't know anything about coding, coding, uh, coding dojos, we just, I just Googled it. <laughs> and I facilitate the first coding group. It works successfully. Um, <clears throat> so, and what we what the question? Yes, I'm sorry. At this point, did you already have a kind of community, uh, so people who are identified as part of the community, or was it just an open possibility for people to go to the dojos? We just um, the dojos were a different um, possibility for the people to go there. And when the opportunity to, to make the coding dojo, the, the, we, we started uh, regular meetings at that point. And um, the email list. Yes, of course. <laughs> and in this company, you need an email list uh, for anything. Okay, so you get got the requests from teams which one would want to have a yes. dojo, and then you need to respond to messages. During the meetings, or by telephone, or email, they say, ah, you, you, you mentioned these coding dojos, <coughs> this funny thing, can you do it in our place? Then of course we are experienced uh, facilitators. We can do that. And just, just out of sorry, <laughs> out of curiosity, what did you exactly do in your first coding dojo? What was your very like? Experience? Roman numbers, of course, uh, was the easiest cutter, and uh, with a, a randori, uh, because that was the thing I found the most interesting part of it. That have the exchanging pair working in, in front, and the rest of them um, um, had to listen. And it was basically practicing because it wasn't very feminine in our company at that time. And even nowadays, not in every department, feminine. So that was basically the beginning of all of that. It was all we started uh, thinking about PDD and practicing, and then we also got the teams and tried there and done together. And the people, <coughs> we also in the training, we have a small slot where we, where we one of us came to the training and said, hey, we have a community. If you want to encode in those, just come to us. Or if you want to talk about doing code, come to us. And that maybe was even the point where people said, hey, can you do a code in those in our team? So they go and said, I'm not allowed to come or I don't want to come. So it's too much effort to come, but you can do it in our team. And now we said, okay, of course. Because at that yeah. time, it wasn't official that, that, that we have a community yeah. and the, the meetings were always in the dark. Besides, not, okay. not very official, just only um, sent through this email list to 32 uh, <coughs> participants, maybe. 
Um, <coughs> so, so, and then we had this was yeah. So the train in the beginning was it mandatory or was it? No, it was <laughs> not. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> Still, the culture has not um, has has not changed far enough to, to make the, such a kind of training mandatory. And um, my experience in the past was, if you want to have a change, you shouldn't make it mandatory, because then the people go to there, try to sleep. That everybody not not knowing they to sleep, just go go off. They just just want to attend, have these three days, have this uh, certificate, and that's it. And the training wouldn't change anything. But uh, it's even better when the people come when they want to come. So maybe they change their preferences. Okay, so it was more fun with everybody to do the training and more forced to join in as well. Yes, it's, it's, it's like a catalog we have in, in our intranet and you can look for trainings and every new training is, has a special advertised. And um, so many people get recognized. And, and of course, this is promotion of the training. <coughs> By sending us an email with my little Annabelle and you say, hey, we have a new training and it's kind of cool and you do this and that and you can settle around. And then the first people who are really interested in learning new things are early adopters start coming to the training and they start persuading the team what they maybe can do in coding code show and then, okay, let's do it better than working on legacy code or something like that. And so it begins. From maniac to maniac, and what did you say? Yeah, yeah, it's the, it's the, like the early adopters starting trying to influence the other ones, and it's like this innovation cycle you can see all the time. <coughs> and the other part of this would be what's the training for the coding dojo? The coding team started just the coding dojo, so you can have this is just, just the dojo. The training is still running <coughs> it's, uh, because there are only um, 12 attendees um, possible for this training. And so we have many, many times this training is, we started um, the, the coding dojos at the same time. But many, sometimes people came back from the training and said, oh, that's cool, I want to make it in our company. And sometimes maybe people read it in the internet or something like that. But from my point of view, we started at first with the training, but it was more like in the training you get first in touch with coding dojos. You know, it's, you can also start with, we have now teams who start with doing coding dojos before they have from the college. And they say, hey, can, can you please do in coding dojos within our team? And then maybe we can do the training afterwards. But at the beginning, this was really like the first getting in touch with caring, craftsmanship, coding dojo, PDD, all like that. Yeah. And at that day, and in this year, we had. Um, um, a developer day, an internal developer day, where all the developers were, were together and they were informed that there will be a kind of major transition coming, that we will get a new building. And um, there was round about uh, dinner, there was um, a, a kind of information fair, and we got a booth in that fair. And so I said, well, I will. It's, it's good to have a booth. And um, I just told Daniel, hey, we have a booth on this uh, internal developer day. And I said, okay. <laughs> I don't really think it was important, but in retrospect, it is really more important because we make connections and do promotion for the community. We make it visible, and we also get in touch with some people, also with some team leads who are more interested in this idea. And so we get first starting getting support from our management for the community. So if you get the chance for such promotion, do it. It's um, one of our biggest learning is promotion is very important. So otherwise you will stay with three or four maniacs in a room. You won't get a community running. So promotion is very important. Um, then we started one of our success stories. Yeah, it was Project Reads. Project Reads at our company um, <coughs> really is a, the format, the thing we are doing with the most success. It's more like and we started it because we get um, Andy was uh, thinking about doing it. I heard from it in the training and said, okay, Andy, let's do it. Then we asked Martin, do we know how to do it or do we know a trainer? Because we don't read about it, but what it really means, we have no idea. And so we 
get Malik Novak, a very experienced facilitator for uh, Coach Peter Sakai, and he comes from Germany. And we made some um, anpassing, some changes to the regular format. We did five sessions and we did more emphasize on retrospective and more emphasize on networking, bringing people together. Um, there were two funny learnings for me. The first thing was um, really you have just to ask people and you have to ask the manager because of that time. I really want to do it, but I wouldn't I wouldn't have asked. But Andy just said, let's ask. And it was also our management and they said, okay. Okay. Okay, yeah. And, and, and many is how to yeah. <laughs> And the other thing really was um, you have to talk to all you have to involve all people at all uh, institutions in our company in your company. For example, what really was a danger, but really was kind of made this event failing was you forget to talk with the work audience. And one week before and two weeks before the event should start, they said, you know, I'm allowed to do it on Saturday. Because it's a regular training, and regular trainings aren't allowed to do on Saturday in our company. And then we have to talk to them and tell them what Coach Pete is all about and that we want to do it on Saturday. And we have a good management which helped us, but it was really a learning. So involve everybody, involve the work up, and tell them what you are doing, why you want to do it. So that <coughs> so, so the learning for us was that yeah. be aware of all your players. And if you want to change something, don't miss somebody of them. Because if you don't, then maybe you get in trouble. We just we just solved it seven mm -hmm. days before the first coach retreat. We solved the problem, but uh, it it could it could have failed if we hadn't so solved it. So, yeah. and um, yes, <laughs> there was um, one thing um, we have uh, an internal magazine for all employees in the company, and uh, they did an interview with me, and so there was one thing to make until until who would be in company. I was still looking on that thing. And was making, yeah, to make advertising for us. Advertising, yeah. And it was also the time where we did our first version of our new book, and it's in English first. And it sometimes reflects our knowledge about software craftsmanship. Has somebody an idea why? C. C. Yeah, you, you buy a C. <laughs> so there's, um, there's something missing. There's something missing. So this is your price. And oh, I lost it. Did <laughs> you recognize it half a year later or something and say, oh, this part is wrong? So, um, and the, but that's a kind of symbol of our knowledge of this mm -hmm. thing. We didn't even, at that point, we, we were called software craftsmanship community, but we didn't know, we didn't know exactly why. <laughs> um, and of course, in the next year, in the 2014, Terry Taylor of our, our, our convention, we did Coach Street again. Yeah, because it worked. First Coach Street, what you just said, we got a big, everybody said, okay, I will tell my colleagues I should come. It was great. <laughs> and so it was here first, we do it. <coughs> we do another Coach Street, number two and three. Um, and just to give, to give you a few ideas why we think our Coach Street are, are such a success. Um, one thing is, we did the coach retreats the way we want to do it. We have one department which runs trainings, but they say we have a standard room setting, we have a standard for what you're doing with Pussy or what you get, with, uh, what food you get. And we say, okay, you want it different. We want a really good food, we want. Uh, Sorry, we didn't want any pizza. <laughs> like we, want, we, want, we want people, we want nice black, uh, posters which Andy was. Um, um, Drawing and so we say, okay, we do it with the communities and we do it in our in our way. We want to and from the very start we had volunteers. It wasn't just Andy and me doing it. We said to the people, if you want to come to um, coach it and if you want to make it a success, please volunteer. You have to um, work in one session, ten percent session, but you are um, yeah you're part of the story. And at that time, it was we had um, more people who want to attend when we have yeah, um, fee free. free. So we just say, and if you help us, if you're a volunteer, you get a safe place or a safe seat with a 
and no running. The others are resolute at that time. And that was um, something new to our company. Nom normally, uh, trainings, every training was like first come, first serve. And we said, no, no, we just we don't want to have it. And the system didn't work in that way. And say, oh, we can't do that. So I say, take 300 participants and then we raffle the 32 who can attend. And so we did this raffle of the participants. And um, for us, um, it was a great learning that we have to make our events special. Make them the way they fit to you. Make them the, that they are different from the other events of the company, so you, you can get more attendance as you do it in that way. And um, in this year, we also had our first presentation of developer award. It was um, we have two different communities at that point: an agile community because of the agile transition. And our software craftsmanship community. And we were thinking, how can we make more promotion for us? And one thing was, why don't we give a prize to somebody who's already working the way we think they should? And so we had um, um, an award with six categories three of the, <coughs> of the software craftsmanship and three of the Asia community. And we did this. Developer award. Um, yes, and what, what we did as in this year was ongoing meetings, regular meetings. And um, maybe you guess what what the the topics are of these meetings. Anybody see the poster in the background? Do you know what topic? <laughs> really, it was kick off because we didn't know anything else at that point. And um, well, I'm honest. Um, but uh, later on in this year, there was a turning point for for me because um, Martin told me, Phil Martin, Martin Heider, and he told me of that conference, Socrates. I think you heard of it, have you? Socrates conference, and there was the first time. <coughs> I attended together with three others from, from Data Houston at that conference and it really changed my mind. Because until that time I thought, hey, I'm coming from such an old, big company doing very old stuff. And I go to a, a conference where all those attendees doing cool stuff and maybe they will laugh at me and say, hey, what you, what you coming from? You don't have any, you're not, you're not a professional or something like that. And none of that happened. It was a very cool conference with long discussions <coughs> and less sleeping. It was very, very inspiring for me. And, and, and then I just realized what this I was talking about and to other attendees and what software craftsmanship really means. And at that point, I was very happy that my clean code community was named Software Craftsmanship Community. And when I got home from this conference, I put the S in the logo. <laughs> <laughs> My first, my first learning. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah. Then but that was the year 2014. Yeah, and 2015, um, good thing for our company was just yeah, a new big building for almost every developer with an open space concept. It makes a community life easier. And but for our code retreats, we did them also in 2015. It was kind. Yeah. It was kind of a new thing. We had a new building and we had first to find out how to do it in the new building. We did four events in 2015. <coughs> Everyone was special. The fourth one was the last one in our old building. The sixth one was the first one in our new building. So, okay, where's, so we have to find out where should we do it, how do we do it. Um, then, when we were familiar with everything, we did uh, this game. Our old building, the maximum number of people who can run within a code retreat was 32. And that, that the sixth one was the first one where we said, okay, we, we double, we have 64 people. We tried to get 64 people. We wanted. We, we wanted. wanted. We want it was still on Saturday, it was still on, uh, still on spare time. And so we thought about, hmm, how do we get the people attending? Um, then we had an idea, we, uh, we named it. Bring your friends or bring your colleagues. It was all about the people 
do an email about it, bring somebody else with you and you get a safe place. It worked, yeah. and we had 42, 44 people, more than ever, but not before. It was the first event where we mustn't travel, but it was, yeah, it was really a success. It was, it was great, but it wasn't like we wanted it. It was the number of people we wanted to do it. Yeah, and the number seven was the first legacy quality people in our company. It was just to get a new idea, and we are 50 years old, we have enough legacy folks. So it's <laughs> like it was, yeah. but still, still, we have now, we are one in a year as uh, legacy quality at the moment, roughly. So uh, yeah. you may notice in the first year we did one contribution, the second year we did two, and the third year we did four. And um, then we, we re realized that organizing those code retreats wouldn't scale up without both of us. So we went and we just were more thinking about what, what may, what, what can we do next year? Because and also, we wanted to make more. <coughs> and also the question was, how do we get 64 people to attend our code retreat? It was also a question we were struggling about. How can we do, get it more attractive? Because for us, it was fixed that we won't do it in work time, we won't um, make it on a mandatory basis. But a fixed thing we said, code retreat must be special, we want people to really want to attend and not to attend. <coughs> and so we did, we talked to Martin, and he said, hey, let's do a, let's do a day of, let's do a, a day and talk about a strategy. A strategy. Invite some people who are around the code retreat, which volunteer you, and let's share ideas, let's share our ideas. So we invited um, seven colleagues and we did a strategy day. And um, may maybe you have experience in your life, uh, sometimes at the end of the day you get a result which you don't expect it. And so we, so we did. Um, at the end of the day we, we have a strategy still for the next year, but we also have an organization. Because um, all those um, um, colleagues were coming to the strategy day, they had <coughs> so many ideas what to do in the next year. They said, hey, you can't do that. Um, only Daniel and you for organizing. We want to help you. And so we had an organization team, eight people uh, until now, and we are running these, um, these uh, code retreats now. This team is running and we don't have to run everything, every uh, code retreat. And um, in the meantime, we decided that we want to do more facilitating. You can't do a facilitator and an organizer of such an event. I think that that won't work. And so now nowadays it's uh, like that. that uh, two of, of the team organ, organ, organize running, one running at one event, running at one event, and two, two of them are facilitating. And this also was kind of the next step involving the community in your own team. Yeah? <coughs> the first six, seven events, they were volunteers, we give them one job, for example, clean up the desk, or you are responsible for the, um, putting up the, the tissues, the tables, the tables uh, something like that, and now it's at, at what, seven or eight people said, okay, you are now responsible for running, or for hosting code retreat number eight, and we made kind of a Trello board where we did all jobs which normally should be done on a code retreat, and so everybody has knows, okay, two weeks before I have to go to the uh, security and talk to them that we are here at Saturday, three days before I have to check if we have enough um, tables or monitors displayed. Yes. And it right. turns out that it works really, really well. Right. And new people have new ideas and it was, yeah. And a company like like that, has many, many ideas, <coughs> tickets for security and everything else. <laughs> you have to solve it before such a um, yes, and um, we spread all the information from the organization team into the company so that maybe somebody else is interested in helping us or volunteering uh, on these on these code retreats. And um, it works, even on SharePoint, it works. Um, we're sharing this information. Um, so one of our biggest learning out of that is involve your early adopters. Get, get them responsible for the thing you're doing and, and they will help you. Um, don't think that you can do it all on your own for the rest. 
it won't work easily. We, we uh, found out that we get even less time to, to do our regular job. So it uh, was very helpful for us to get some helping hands. Okay, and um, we did some more activities in this year. <laughs> <laughs> okay, before I give examples, this one that we did it was running coding dojos in different languages <coughs> in one room. So in one room, yeah. PowerShell, Java, and C++. The same, the same, the same kata in three different languages, and people could walk around and watch how it's working in different languages. What you can see here is our community of practice for um, coding dojo. Facilitators, so they start connecting to each other and sharing ideas how to run coding culture. <coughs> it was also kind of nice. <coughs> and one of my favorite activities from 2015 was our um, code scan award. Yeah, Can I just yeah. copy this and see if it looks something like this? Yeah, of course. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, As a let us know about it. <laughs> yes. It was kind of the um, office. Once, of once they fire me, uh, it will be easier for me to run a code. <laughs> <laughs> we run it and we weren't fired. Yes. But it, yeah, we, we think a lot about it before. Should we do it? How should we do it? Um, and we said, okay, let's do it. Let's make it small. Let's make it funny. Um, it was really, I think it was really in the team. We did just an email to our email list and we made some email here printouts and hang it out there. <coughs> So code scan is like a short link for our SharePoint site that describes what you want to do. The idea was John feels bad as code and tell him why it's bad. And you only you have to like the why is really really important. And the people who are attending have five minutes to tell. <coughs> and then the community have kind of the opposite. They just say what's good about this code, and then we just make it like in a code uh, in a Code is then we just make like okay, who do you think you have won? And it was really it was fun. We had five people. That was the thing we were most struggling about. If everybody would um we had, um, <laughs> apply, uh, apply for city rent, but it was five people and it was good developers from my point of view, at least that I know them. And, and it was really bad at code. Yeah, really. And it was really <laughs> interesting that <laughs> I was impressed. We didn't do a lot of promotion, but so many people talked to me about this event and why we do it. And what the idea behind it is kind of, you can see the culture of your company. It was even one guy where at the point that he won't, won't pick the title on our, our SharePoint because then he's in the recent edit list and connected to this event and he won't. <laughs> so yeah. it was really, really interesting and was fun. And I really, I'm really curious, we do it now, we didn't do it in 2016, but now in, I think in March, in May, in May we do the second edition. So, at the moment we just... And we can tell you if we are fired after that. Yeah, also a nice, a nice story about that one was, our, one of our management, who was a former developer, joined this event. Comes in and you clearly can see the faces switching off. <laughs> and she just hey, don't worry, don't worry, I'm really in anti patterns and I love this idea and I just want to see what you are doing. And so it, it was, that was really was funny. Was <laughs> yeah. And at that point, the fairy tale is over because um, I'm, I'm since the beginning of 2016, I'm not a maniac anymore, or my company, of course, is a maniac, I don't know. Because um, at that point, I got it in my job description. Um, I'm just a kind of a community gardener for our in-house community. And um, I'm the official code quality officer in the company. So like something like that. Uh, and um, I could make all those trainings and all those things. And um, that is really remarkable for the change of the culture in our company. That is now getting recognized by the management and getting accepted by the management. And we were doing cool things. And one of these, one of these cool things, or one of these uh, signs of changing <coughs> of the culture change is this thing. Yeah. Um, 
And the two of this thing was really exciting here for us until was had to do with job descriptions, like a pattern you may know from um, previous change, make it part of your job description. So how do you manage to do it that you are responsible for the community? And another thing was we have certain desperate opportunities to present people out to conferences, but not that the um, uh, department lead or the management decides, okay, you go to the conference now, the community decides. We have seven places and we can invite people which are really, um, which are really excited about the community, or which are good presentations, which are really do a lot of things in the community to go outside and to learn and to get in touch with the idea. And for us it was great because it was really a, a good sign that we do the right thing from the management and for the people it was really useful to involve the early adopters again from the community. People who are around the community to present them out, get in touch with the ideas of different people and they really got a boost. It was also my experience, the first conference, the first face-to-face -face conference I ever attended was really like, wow, game changer. Like Andy said, it was so fantastic. And even Bay did it. And I can tell you, I had some interesting phone calls with uh, bosses. Yeah, Something like, um, we always send somebody else to conferences. I always say it's the idea, it's the architect or the principal developer, and how can we then just slowly and really get it developer? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Um, my answer always was because I want to. <laughs> and I was allowed to say that. No, um, we, we, everybody we decided <coughs> could go to the conference. That was a good appreciation of the, of the uh, community. And it is a great learning for us, uh, for me, myself, like Socrates in, in 2014. Conferences can help you to activate the early majority. You can, you can if, you, if you get the chance in your company to, to send those people to conferences, you may have a chance to get them more involved in your community, get them more helpful to change the, the culture or to, to change the mindset, anything you want to do with your community. So that was very helpful for us. Yes, and we did a big summer code retreat because the summer code retreat, we did only four, uh, we didn't scale up in 2016. We had still four code retreats, far enough uh, work to, to organize them. And we had a summer code retreat with uh, many attendees and um, also um, the head of the software development department, the system managers, uh, attended this event. And um, they made, together with all these attendees, a huge perspective. And they just wanted to find out how, where are we standing in four years with this company or with this, with this community of code retreats. And um, yes, and this year, these uh, management uh, who attended the Code Skunk Award, she, um, she uh, became a mentor. And because they were, um, one day I got the email and uh, was that, that we should look for a mentor for our community to help us to solve problems. And we, we choose her, and it is a good choice because um, now we get. We are getting early and, and cheaper information from the management, and she's making um, promotion for us, and she helps uh, when when we get phone calls like we always send the different one to the community or something like that when people are not allowed to attend events or something like that or when we need money of course, yeah. and she helps us to get money for all these trainings for getting external speakers. And um, again, yes, again, <laughs> to a victim we did promotion, promotion, promotion. We had some nice shirts and we were kind of uh, in the middle of our new building and talked to people. Hey, maybe I told you. Did you heard about Speed Code and did you heard about our community and why don't you attend? Oh, I'm from business, I can still attend. No? <laughs> Um, and it was a funny thing. This, this thing was very funny because we have um, our canteen where everybody is going for dinner. Um, we were standing in front of the door, and people were coming, seeing us with a T-shirt and with 
things in hand. They just walked around and looking for a different door, but they weren't lucky because we were standing in front of every door. <laughs> so if you want to make such a promotion, uh, beware of all the doors. <laughs> and um, do funny activities to, to get attention. It, it really gets it. We, we, we were wearing these orange shirts, and um, we were sitting together then for, for dinner. And, uh, we had many, many discussions. Yeah. And <coughs> one simple addition is a t shirt that Andy has now. We are um, giving that as well, really, to the people who are attending our community here. Always are, um, invite them. If you want a t shirt, just give us a call and you get one. And it's really nice to see all the people that are hanging around in the comedy circle in every color. And it's also, yeah, it's make some connection to each other. You know, okay, we have the same idea. We can talk to them on yeah, different level, I think. Oh, we, it's really good. We didn't talk then. We just we just give the t-shirts to everybody who <laughs> wants one. And uh, in a couple of weeks, when it's get warmer outside, we, we make a t-shirt day. <laughs> Call out a t-shirt day. And uh, hopefully, till then, we have around about 150 t-shirts in the company, so that when we are going in in a mass, maybe we have more dis discussion. So, absolutely. Um, yes, and we did a very funny thing. I was dreaming right from the from the first code retreat we, we run in the company, I was dreaming of being a hoster for uh, the Global Day, of course. And to help you to understand why this is special for me is, it's not so easy to open the company to get somebody um, coming in and working in the company. It's not so easy because of security. You, you don't want us to spread your tags to everybody. So it's not very easy to get somebody in, in the company yet, but we managed it. We had the new building and in the new building we have a conference zone and that can be locked uh, to the rest of the building. So we can invite guests. So it makes it easier for us. And was the first time we had uh, 66 attendees. Thought it was one of the biggest in Germany, I think. Um, and we had 33 guests, 33 developers from Dartest. And uh, the first funny thing we did a lineup: all the employees of Dartest on the one side, and uh, all the guests on the other side. And we saw them then just the other way around from. Experienced TDD to not experienced, and the other line was just the other way around, sorted. And then, like in the dancing school, we said, <laughs> You have a partner. That was very fun. And it was uh, just to give you an idea of our legacy code, as we can see, that's COBOL. <coughs> COBOL, we have assembler, we have C, C, Visual Basic, C Sharp, Java, JavaScript. And the funny thing is, yeah. you can't do unit testing in Cobol. On the whole. It's pain, it's really pain. You have to do five different keystrokes to get from the test to the um, source code, but you can do it. It was kind of fun. <laughs> <laughs> and one of our colleagues was running uh, a mock session during this, this code retreat, right at the first session. And he was so filled up, he made five sessions per day because everybody wanted to attend and wanted to make test-driven development in COBOL on, on host, uh, running live on our <laughs> main frame. <laughs> really cool. And um, so you see again, uh, since six or seven code retreats at a time, management is coming <coughs> just to give an appreciation to, uh, to everybody who's coming on a Saturday, just to show them, hey, you're, you're, giving, you're spending your uh, free time and we are spending our free time and just say hello to you and just talk to you. And that was it's a very good appreciation for the attendance. And we have um, the net promoter score, everybody knows the net promoter score. We did, we did get on the global code retreat, we get 100. So very proud of that. Um, and that is one of our learnings. You know, exactly what you see here is. We invite VIPs and invite people from the management for one thing we really did from the very early beginning. It starts with the lead of our department, just to show them why we are spending our time organizing just an event, and was continuing with a level up and ends up with um, we're missing we're missing two levels. The CEO wasn't here. 
Yeah? I will get them this year on the global day, of course, I'm sure. And I had a whole lot of planets from just to show them why we are doing it and what's the idea behind it. And so they maybe get uh, more open when people from their team come and want to do, for example, coding dojo. So really um, <coughs> one important thing we should also try and just invite one or two from the management. Hey, come and see what we are doing and why we are doing it. We always try to persuade them to join the a session. Sometimes it worked, sometimes it didn't work. <laughs> it worked last last Saturday. Last Saturday it worked, yeah. <laughs> um, so we have many learnings. It's a learning curve to get here. We, we found out that during the Global Day of Fortitude, if you um, ask your human resources recruiting department, they will help you. Of course, the Global Day of Code Retreat is kind of recruiting, kind of presenting the company and saying, I will cool place to work. So we have many attendance, attendees coming to this Global Day of Code Retreat. They were looking for a very dusty old company. And they, they didn't even thought that a company like Dativ opens the doors and lets somebody in. And they were very astonished that this, it wasn't dusty. We cleaned up, of course. <laughs> <laughs> it was a new building. Um, no, because um, they could cope with us and they had fun. And recruiting helps you. It's a good supporter for the community. And for me, it's for two reasons. At first, people were attending at code retreats, also people who want to have a psychology with their teammates. And the other thing is, hey, when you need money and you can get some from recruiting, why not? Or if you need help from in organization as a company, why not? And we just, and we still have a supporter. And we are um, we still have jobs. So <laughs> I'm here by car and I have three uh, seats left. <laughs> <laughs> um, and one. Really, it's an evergreen, but it's really true for us because it evolves step by step. If you want to change something, don't start with your final goal. Just make it step by step. Not only because we were learning, but it was uh, also a good good way to. If we, if we would have wanted to have to start with a global day of code retreat, having external guests there, making it sixty four people and make it big and, and special, I think it wouldn't have worked. Besides that, we don't have any idea how it works, but um, we didn't get the, the management permission for that at that time. So it's, it's a good thing if you evolve step by step. Yes, and of course, an organization team, even of volunteers, is a team. And it's helpful to make a retrospect. Yeah, but then the one one question which arises during the team system was what can the organization team decide and what has the whole team to decide? And guess what we are doing in in, in the next week, next week, two weeks, next week, next week, I call it in two weeks, we are doing a delegation program. So kind of the same thing arises in Quadrant team. And we still are, that's one of our challenges really to um, get the people which are running the code retreats or running the community to. Get, to get them on fire, that they still um, have the energy to do it next year and the next year and the next year, and it's uh, stopping before they running out of energy or if they play too much. Yes, and uh, of course we had strategy day. First strategy day was such such a success. We had another one. We have a strategy for this year. We have already one legacy code retreat last Saturday. We will have. Uh, and uh, two or three other code, uh, code retreats until summer, and of course, we have a global day. <coughs> I mean, after the first one, management was asking to make another one. I think we don't have any choice. Oh, but we want to. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> we are so sorry, but we make it. Um, <coughs> and what we did in 2016 was our last presentation of the developer awards. Maybe you little bit astonished about that, but um, we just found out that the, the, the culture has began to change. It's not the change is not finished right now, but the culture in the company has changed. And we think the awards are not fitting now. I don't know. As the interesting thing is here is from my point of view, uh, 
Funny to find out that's the thing I get fired on the first time for work. Yeah, um, <laughs> it's just because we. If you have a choice. Yeah, <laughs> okay, yes, thanks. And like Andy said, in 2014 it was good to um, make spotlight on people who are still have, um, starting business ideas or still are really good at um, doing using Asia and technology, for example, or um, doing TV or something like that. But now that we found out that more people are frustrated because they are not there, they, they are not at the level that they think they can. Um, win it. Hmm? They are not at the, at the level that they think they can win a prize. They, they can win a prize. More people get frustrated and it's also mm -hmm. something like, we say, okay, we want people that they are doing software craftsmanship because they think they can win a nice prize. We want that they do it because they believe it's the best thing and now we are thinking of maybe we are doing a community night, which we are allowed to, where we just telling uh, success story or doing funny things or we just tell fun things. Just, just ideas. We just we don't have out. any ideas. Yeah. That's right. That's right. Yeah. Um, so that is a learning for us. Don't stick to every idea. Just always make a retrospective for yourself. It's okay. Because. <laughs> It, it's the first next year would be the first year we have a regular budget for the awards, but it's okay. I'm I'm um, curious what will happen on the morning. <laughs> <laughs> but that's also a, uh, okay. Let's see it. So these are the next steps for for um, for for 2017. We give T-shirts to very young developers. No, recruiting <laughs> starts very. <laughs> I have three seats left now. Right. Um, yeah, what are we doing in 2017? Um, of course, we mentioned photo trees. We are thinking about doing um, some kind of uh, exit, exit, uh, classification by example, ABCD retreat, but we are still searching for ideas how to do it, for example. Um, I know that we mentioned we want to do the second edition of the Codecamp Award. We also set up a organizing team for the regular monthly meetings because until December it was like Andy and I were hosting and organizing our first monthly meetings and we thought, okay, the pattern we are involving more people who work very well for um, photo meet, so let's try it also for the um, community meeting. We did it the last two times. At the moment, it works very well, but we are still adjusting how it, how it works. And uh, we want to make, uh, we want to become the community to make decisions, and we want to, uh, and to, to obey that and to give them more responsibility for, for something. And we are starting giving the rules of the Solar Cube server to let's discuss them in the community and um, hopefully get. A common basis of what we are thinking, what good code is, and giving the rules um, or making those rules for, for the Solar Cube server. So it's giving more responsibility to the community. That's my job for this year. Yes, um, so and uh, for, of, of course, at the summer code retreat, we did a forecast uh, what we would um, manage, and this was what happened. We had 179 various participants. In our code retreat, 402 overall, and um, our management said, "Well, <laughs> <laughs> I, I the first question for me was, do you think 31 in one year or overall? Overall, yeah, thank you. Um, we're looking for it. Yeah. It's a, it's a good aim. Um, yes, and these are the the challenges we have and the." The manager started chatting about that was uh, at the strategy day where we were asked, What do you think? Where are we now? You know, these 
Um, and also code repetition, which we are, we are doing yeah. a lot below. Did we get the early majority of the tutorials? We don't have it. That's across the platform or not. Um, one funny thing is that we can tell that uh, if we have enough, uh, and, and it's because we don't know how many software developers we have. You may think it's funny, but uh, it's, it's because of our job description. Uh, we have a job description that's called software developer. Well, that's okay, but uh, not all of these software developers are doing software development. There's uh, uh, anything else? Um, Tester, um, requirements engineers, um, all these other roles are, everybody's called software developers, so I don't know if we have 20% of our software developers that do code retreats or already 80, I don't know. So these are the challenges we have. Um, and maybe you have questions. Yes. So you said that this requirement to promote yourself, yes. uh, to promote your, yeah, so I guess promote abilities or promote your suggestion very much role. So what arguments do you have to convince the management and also other developers that it's really worth the requirement? I think um, our management knows that we have a bunch of legacy software. And that um, many code is not in that quality would like we would like to have. So they know that there has to, it has to change something. <coughs> People has to get more more trainings or more knowledge or another mindset in the world. Mm -hmm. And so it was not very complicated to con to to make promotion in the, in the management. It's more complicated to make promotion for the for the uh, colleagues. Yeah. And from the management in retrospective, I'm the main manager at HR Function for the very beginning. And one interesting thing in our company is that the transition didn't start from top to bottom. We didn't roll out um, Scrum or something like that. But we have a community that really was a grassroots um, development. We had two we had, um, teams which are starting um, thinking about coding dojo, thinking about Scrum, and so I, I think they knew that we are supporting the right values. They even knew that we have deployments going really bad, and they knew we had to change, we had to take more care, take more responsible for our code, use new techniques, use um, modern development techniques which aren't so familiar um, in our company at that time. So it was that yeah, was really not such a problem to um, transform Scrum. The product is always about um, inviting Sam Jones and Brad Bunch from San Francisco to be our sponsors for that and to have the experience. And hopefully to get um, colleagues taking their colleagues to our events. So we can come on, look at them. Sometimes you can, you have another one. Promotion we are doing. So this Tony Gardner, uh, is this your full time job, or are you also doing some development, and are you know some part of your time from put into this learning? And right at the moment, I'm not doing any coding besides coding those in Flash, but or at home, I'm not. Okay, so coding in the company is a full time job. Full time job. Run this um, <coughs> coding with uh, code retreat. Do you have an uh, external moderator for it? Or at at the start, <coughs> we started with external facilitator because we didn't know how to run a code retreat. We were maniacs, but we didn't do anything. And um, now, nowadays, we the, the global day of code retreat last year was the first code retreat we just completely run for ourselves. And we really said at the beginning, we also said, okay, we have to focus on the um, hosting and the organization. And, and when we have enough experience and enough people who can like, do the organization, then we can think about moderating, facilitating to that. And that's what Kelly has the role of. Yeah. How much time have you been doing with the, the subscription? Is it kind of a free tool to use it? 
this on the side so the moment couldn't be <coughs> officially or really? Can you react to that? Yeah. <laughs> Officially, um, I was allowed by my by my boss to uh, spend ten percent of my time, and I wasn't good at percentage. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and I what I was did more, <coughs> 20, 25, 40 percent, and he knew it, and he accepted it. Nay, he knew it, and he he accepted it because at that time he uh, my my direct boss. He was he was. Um, um, but sorry, convinced. convinced by this idea, and um, also the the boss uh, to two steps above him was convinced yeah. by this idea. That same, was helpful. It was yeah. the same movement who uh, allowed us to run the code retreat. It was our same boss, and that was really it was luck for us because today we want to do more in this company. We need ten percent. Okay, and we say can we twenty percent? Okay, <laughs> and in reality it was thirty percent. So if you have a team lead which really is convinced by that idea or uh, supports that idea, it's kind of difficult. But it's also step by step. If I would come to my team lead and would say him in the beginning, I need thirty percent or even fifty percent some type of my time to run the community. He would say no, but it's, I started with ten, and when we show those advantages, it yeah. might good for the whole company. Remember the learning step by step. Yeah. Yeah. I'll be honest, step by step. <laughs> I, I, if you want to start a community, you won't uh, you won't do it with one person spending ten percent of the time. That won't work. It's not enough. So did you ever try to kind of measure the impact in terms of code quality or success? Because you're in a kind of interesting situation where the management board seems not to ask for the impact of these kind of things. It's hard to measure. It can, is. Can, yeah. can, you I, can you tell me how to measure it? No, I'm asking you. I, I, would, very, <laughs> I would be very happy if, if, if I get an idea. Um, it's, it's a kind of soft measuring. It's, you, you, you see people... Um, or you hear people more talking about these things. You see that they that they change things, that they make more coding dojos, that they that more people attend the events or our regular meetings. You see that they are talking more talking about that and that they really get um interested in this Sonar Tube server thing and that they're looking for um for these issues <laughs> founded there and that they're discussing about them. It's 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 a soft measuring. You yeah. can't measure it really hard. Yeah. Say you, you were well, telling about painful deployments. Did you see any kind of improvement there? Yeah, we, we see it. We also um, what that's where it really gets hard to measure our impact because, for example, we um, we have a lot of our program will be developed um, once in a year and with a DVD, kind of old fashioned. But we did a. And in 2012, we didn't have almost any continuity integration system. And we did a lot of effort, the whole company, to get a BI system, a continuity integration system. And this also helps us really, like everybody knows, that we find uh, problems uh, in the earlier stage of the development and um, get, don't get substantive uh, deployments. So what's our, um, so it's hard to say, was it the CI system? Was it because people are more um, used to write tests? It's kind of hard. What it all pays for uh, getting better quality. Yeah. So but we always say that that we were. <laughs> yeah, because, uh, <laughs> of course, yeah. but but that's promotion. It was one of the learning. <laughs> <laughs> because if you, if you have Eagle. basically a whole company on board, it would be really interesting to get something like. Um, Feature lead times so it's really a system level kind of right. measurement. Um, what what else you can you can see in our company is the change of the culture. Yeah. In in former times, mm -hmm. command and control they would wanted to have measurements, and now they know that they can't get real measurements, and they're not asking for it. Mm -hmm. And they know that they have to run these kinds of communities, mm -hmm. and that the people have to to talk to each other besides the departments in the company 
otherwise it won't work that they would learn from each other and, and that our quality is getting better and they know that and because of that they know that they don't ask for measures measures so that's a real good situation of course but because i, I can't tell them any numbers what you have uh, told us about sonar cube measurements. Uh, so, are the measurements, uh, can they be significant uh, to measure also the change of the core quality? I'm not telling this core quality is because of the, your events or not, but uh, it can be measured, can't it? It, it? it can be measured, but uh, it's still um, building up the system. There are coming more and more uh, programs are scanned by this uh, sonar cube server. And to make it a tool for the developers, uh, our management isn't allowed to look in, uh, to look at the measurements or, or at SonarCube. We have an active directory group where only developers are in, and only these are allowed to use the SonarCube yeah, server, not, the, not the management. The, the community <coughs> fight for that and say, okay, we don't want to have it in by the management directly because I, for my, I strongly believe that you can give, you can. Uh, take every metric if you want to. So if you want to have a metric as a success, people want must want to use it. So if your team decides, okay, we commit that we will, for example, use SonicCube and we want to get better, then it's really helpful to, if some people, and we have such situations in our community that say, okay, exceptions have to go down from 20% to the next release. That's just too, 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 too. So a message box because of that exception. So and we didn't see it here. It's yeah, like, it that's the situation we don't want to have. <laughs> so yeah. that's because we want to have people change their mindset, we said no management allowed. Yeah. And we had the power to do that. So that is a kind of <coughs> culture change in the company. The, the, the community was allowed to say, no, we don't want to have the management look into the <coughs> metrics. Yeah. But still, you have no 100% in your community, right? Yes, of course. How do you deal with this part? Um, I know it's kind of a difficult situation, difficult question, but anyway, how did you try to, to get them involved? We strongly believe in the discussions in every team and that the, the members already in the, in the community would spread the idea it won't work if we make posters or if we make films or uh, something like that. Promotion is important to get attendance, but it won't change the mindset. That will change when, when people in teams <coughs> tell or when, they, when, when you have enough people in one team and they say, we want to do TD from now on. Then it will change, but not if, if we go to the teams and say so. Here we are. That our that is your new rule sets. Do that in that way. I don't think that will work. Yeah. No more questions. What are your biggest challenges? So, did, did you meet any opposition? Uh, so someone tried to to stop you. Um, some ideas, okay, this, this is something that you that you are doing wrong or uh, or you shouldn't be doing. Uh, Interesting is no opposite from the upper management, but from sometimes from the middle management they have difficulties. But they have difficulties with the change. And also from, also from developers. They are yeah, from the developers. They are you take this this bullshit. Yeah, I know. Yeah, every, every That's why I'm asking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you have those people. TDD is bullshit. Uh, software craftsmanship is bullshit. Everything is bullshit except my work. That's yeah. why I'm great. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Yes. All right. For me, nice yeah. For yeah. me, it's I need not, to implement this feature. To yes. <laughs> for me, it's like it's my <coughs> way. Like I do. I always try to work or talk to the, to the people which I think which are open for it or which uh, want. To learn it, <coughs> to, try to help them to get to, to get better. Maybe they start spreading around other people in their team. I don't care too much, to be honest, those people which are strongly on the opposite because I, I 
like this innovation cycle we see before, you will always have a small percentage of, of percentage on fields which you can change. And you it just have to accept them from my point of view. And from that day, when I accepted that, I got more calm. It was, was, was easier for me. Well, but so I thought I'm, I'm getting better. There was one question there. You can probably just wait them out because if our premise is correct, then uh, these methods result in better code. So they will be eventually replaced. Yes, so the opposition will have. I don't know how uh, if uh, there are different opinions in uh, a team uh, about code quality and uh, clean code approach. How do they solve this? Because they get some influence from your side, from the community on the one side. But if there is a guy who just don't accept it, then well, we are not getting good code quality there. Yes, we have the, those situations, and these are the moments where we where we. Um, Make the good guys stronger. So we, <laughs> so we say, you come to us, we give you a big hug <laughs> and work on them. Um, yeah. it, you, you, you can't, um, you can't, convince, or you can't uh, convince everybody. And also, to be honest, our community can change. So, the whole continent can change. Our team which things go bad. For example, we have teams where the God developed well. There is a God developer and he thinks, okay, I know everything and I know how the code works, why should I care about team code? Yeah. And what I think what you can do in the community, you can talk to the other users and support them, say, hey, I think what you are thinking is the right thing and keep on doing it. And also feel maybe go to another team, but it doesn't work. Or maybe we can talk to your team lead, why is in general a good idea to do Team code, or why it's in general not a good idea to have a God developer in your team. But that's also a topic where um, at the moment the ASAP transition mm -hmm. becomes strong in our, there is more force from the management. And these are also topics about how the organization change and how people work together. And, and hopefully, we can do everything. We can support the people. And I think what really helped me at the beginning when I want to leave started one reason was that ahead of time was because I think maybe it's such a huge company I can talk to almost nobody. And now you can even help to get connected and that they can talk to others who have the same opinion and the same experience. And more, hopefully we get more and more and more. And, and hopefully the rest of the code is getting better so that uh, um, God developer's code is raising the exception. And then God developer will learn. It, it takes some time, of course. I, I believe in that. I'm a hero. <laughs> I do know people who, has, who have started uh, practicing TDD in your community. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, we have, um, we now, I think about three or four teams starting TDD really to the top. They, um, every, every, every week they come, we have 10 tests more and less, and less we errors. Have and we have our Asia blog. Communities are blogging, and we have one team who's writing once a month at least. Oh, we have now 10,000 unit tests, we have now 11,000 unit tests. So, well, the uh, uh, this now measure is just how many tests they have. Yeah, yeah. Test scores or they not. didn't report on the quality. Uh, yeah. but we, have, uh, we have teams running new code or making new code with the TDD yeah. uh, mm -hmm. practice test. First the test, then the yeah. mm -hmm. But not the whole company. And not cobalt. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Even if it works. <laughs> we also serve uh, kind of a consultancy role. So did, for example, management came to you and asked, okay, this team would like to do this or that. Uh, what do you think about it? Is this uh, a good idea or not? We are thinking right about this. So to, to yeah. establish kind of, of um, technical coach. No, it happens also. It, it happens. Um, what we, what happened, one thing that we didn't mention, we have also, what it was in 2015, they did a new testing strategy within our company, company and they also invited people from the community, hey, how should we do it? But then it 
how to do different things in integration, what unit testing and such things. That was on the management side. And what happened from time to time is that people, developers, um, team leads come to us and ask us, hey, we need support, we, we want to do unit testing. I was, yesterday I was in a meeting with people saying, we want to do unit testing, we did the course, but now we are in our own code and we have so much dependencies and we don't know how to do it in our code. Can you help us? And now we, me and another guy from the team, we have said, okay, what we can do with you is start doing coding dojos, um, train some basics, and then we maybe can do a workshop with your code. And that happens from uh, all the time, but it's also the thing with, um, yeah, I have to ask my boss that I can do it. Lucky here I have a boss and a lot of people from all the media have the situation that they can use 10 to 20 percent for such things. So, real percent, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> real percent. not my two. And but, but so we're going to, we're, we're, we're thinking about um, to get for, for um, a certain amount of time technical coaches for, for different <laughs> technical aspects. We're thinking about that, but um, it's hard to get them if you get. External technical coaches, they not knowing how it works in our architecture, and it takes some time to to get them involved in the architecture and um, to tell them, okay, that is the way it is, mm -hmm. and we have to train it in this way, or we have to to make um, DDD working in our architecture, yeah. and not to tell uh, us that we have done the wrong architecture. It's a kind that we know is in some place, but. Um, well, it's, it's hard to get external coaches doing that in a good way. If you take these the good coaches from the company, well, they are used at every place. Everybody wants to get them, so it's hard for them to 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 do their job because they they are used in their own team and they can always spend all their time uh, in other teams. So it's difficult. We have to talk about it. Find a solution. So, I mean, that'd be interesting. We have a kind of a coaching model in our co in company where we get an <coughs> external coach who does one day of training or so, and then the team gets homework. So, there's a lot of work in the team itself, and mm -hmm. why not there, there, during the time there's obviously no work for the coach? And then he just, um, <coughs> you may have a phone call or something about the results of the homework. Okay. Um, do, do you know this model, or would this be interesting it's, it's to scale idea. your in it's a good idea, I think, um, maybe to, to make such a model. We, we will try it out. It's baked in the dust. <laughs> <Tell me. laughs> uh, I was also thinking about doing kind of this, uh, I would say, internal uh, coaching. So moving those good people around the, the team every, I don't know, uh, three months, six months. Uh, so that the, the knowledge spread. Uh, I guess the, the company is not that big enough to, to be able to, to afford to, to do such a thing. Uh, and then the question would be, uh, because you said that you have around 1,500 developers, I don't know if you were talking about those uh, developers in the paper or developers that are actually writing the, the code. 1,800 so developers in the paper. <laughs> okay. Uh, how uh, how uh, big influence uh, had the size of your company uh, to to your success? So I guess in the in the big company it's far easier to find this this initial group of people that would actually like to to do it. I think you're right. I think that was our luck that we are in the big company, so that we could do that. And, and right at the beginning we could do that in, in a hidden place, so no one knows. When you start coding coaches, you need five people. And all the things which happened in our team. So I can imagine that this can also help in smaller companies. But of course, we learn we are a big company and it's easier to find 20 people or a thousand than 
Thank you. Okay. Also, thank you so much for your talk and for your experience. It's really exciting. <laughs> oh, well, and now uh, Dutchie is here. He, he wants to make two of us uh, gifts from JetBrains, and therefore <laughs> he can do it right now. You are going for IntelliJ. Yay. <laughs> 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 